This demo is based on Chapter 3 of Adobe Photoshop CS5 Classroom and a Book. So if you have that book, you can follow along with that. I'm not going to do the whole chapter, uh, just a small segment for what we'll use in Digital Image Design class. So here in Photoshop, I need to open up a couple of files. So I'd like to do that through the mini bridge. Click on that icon. I'm going to go to Browse Files. And you're going to find where we have the files saved. We have them on the Lesson Files folder, which you should have dragged to your desktop. I already have them right here. I want the goal image. And I want to come down here to the Selections Lesson. I've got a couple of other files in there from uh, demos I'm in the middle of. But I'm going to just drag those two here into the workspace and they should open up as separate tabs. I like to take this goal image and just sort of tear it off a bit and then I'm going to shrink it down just so I can keep an eye on where those things go and I can come back and use them and kind of use that as a, a demo of what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go to my main picture and hit control zero to zoom it in and I'm going to start getting into the selection tools. These tools here are the selection tools. Um, you need to make a selection to do just about anything. If I want to recolor part of an object, I have to make a selection and then recolor it. If I want to uh, cut an object out of the background, that starts with a selection tool as well. So it becomes very important to learn how to use these different selection tools. So this lesson uh, will give us practice using those selection tools. We're going to start off with um, the elliptical marquee. You have the marquee tool here by default. I'm going to click and hold and get the elliptical marquee to select this little oval shape here. And we're going to do something a little, um, a little tricky with it. So this is tricky because um, it's hard to get exactly right on an oval when we're making a selection, as you can see here. Um, you can get close, but it's really hard to get it exactly on. So to get it exactly on, you're actually going to use your left hand on the keyboard and your right hand on the mouse, or flip that if you use your mouse with your left hand. Um, so I'm going to start drawing, and occasionally I'll have to hit spacebar. And whenever I hit spacebar, I can drag and move around those dancing ants or marching ants, as some people call them. And I can readjust it and put it right back here um, to, the, uh, to the left hand side of this oval. Now you can see that I'm still clicking the mouse. I'm not going to let go of the mouse until the very end. So I'm going to get that close there, hit the space bar again, and move it back over to the left until I have these dancing ants all the way around the entire oval there. That looks good. Now, if we were to actually do this on a real project, we'd probably copy and paste these. Uh, and every time you copy and paste, it makes a new layer. We haven't learned layers yet uh, in our digital imaging class. So what I want you to do for right now is just take that Move tool right up there next to the Marquee tools. It's kind of like the black arrow tool in Illustrator that we've already learned. We're going to grab that and move that over uh, in place, looking at my goal image, just trying to get it in place on the goal image. And once I have it set, I'm going to go ahead and hit Control D to deselect, and it's into place. Let's practice that skill again, and we're going to do this with the seashell picture, or the seashell circle there, and I'm going to use my zoom tool. Now, usually by default it says scrubby zoom, and it's usually checked. I really dislike scrubby zoom, so I uncheck that, and that way I can draw a box around where I want to zoom into, which it feels much more natural to me because that's how Photoshop has worked for years. So I'm going to get my... Um, my elliptical marquee again, and I'm going to throw in an extra key. I'm going to hold down Shift the whole time. And what Shift allows me to do is make a perfect circle. Then whenever I need to move my circle around, I'm going to hold down Spacebar, move it into place, let go of Spacebar when I'm ready to draw more, Spacebar again to move it into place, and then draw until I'm all done. Now I'm going to let go of my mouse before I let go of Shift. Um, and then that way I don't accidentally mess up my nice circle. So control zero, zero's my view, get my move tool, and I'm going to move it into place. Now let me deselect this for a second. Anytime we do an image adjustment or a filter, and there's a ton of them and we'll learn some of them, image adjustment, and if I do invert, it flips the color, 
right? And you can see that that blue and white on the seashell is exactly what we want, but we don't want it on the rest of the picture. So let me undo that, and I'm going to select, reselect, and I've got my dancing ants around that circle again. And if I've got a selection, any image adjustments that I do will stay right inside that selection. So image adjustments, same thing again, invert. And it inverts just the color right there, which is what we want. Now we can see that there are three circles here on our goal image. So I'm going to hold down Alt with my Move tool, and that will allow me to drag out another copy. And then we learned how to use the black arrow tool in Illustrator, how you can just click on an object and resize it with the black arrow tool. In Photoshop, we have to tell the Move tool that we're going to resize it. And we do that by hitting Control T for Transform, or it's also under Edit, Free Transform. And so I'm going to make it slightly larger. And then I hit Enter to apply that change. Okay? I'm going to do that again because there's three circles. I'm going to hold down Alt with my Move tool. Creates my third copy, Control T to make it bigger. And then hit Enter. Now, again, usually when, once we learn how to do layers, we'll probably make a new layer for each of these things. Um, right now, it's staying on one layer, so it's just flat pixels. And once I've deselected, Photoshop no longer really understands that these are separate layers. It's just these are pixels and these are pixels, and it's just a flat uh, box of pixels for Photoshop at this point. Okay. Okay, let's take our zoom tool and zoom into another object. I'm going to zoom into this sand dollar so you can see what we do. We're going to use this tool here. It's the tool in the selections area that looks like a paintbrush with little dancing ants going around it. This is the quick selection tool. And what it does is it looks at the color that's underneath the plus sign that's in the middle of my circle. Um, and then it'll select anything inside that circle that is the same color as what's underneath the plus sign within a few values. So theoretically, if I've got uh, a shape like this, um, anything inside that plus sign, is they're all tan pixels. So if I were to click, then uh, any tan pixels within the circle would be selected. Um, ideally, anything that is white then, which is you know, off of the object, wouldn't be selected. So it's, that's a, it's a little tempting for Photoshop to select everything. So we're just going to get um, a pretty small little selection tool here. And I start, instead of starting on the outside edge with this object, I start inside uh, with this quick select tool. And I just click once, and then I can kind of run over it a little bit, and suddenly I've got a nice selection on the outside going. There's not a lot that I have to do with that. This sand dollar being all tan, it actually selects pretty quickly. I like this tool. It's new in CS5. We'll probably use it more than any other of the selection tools. Okay, so let me control zero to zoom out and move this sand dollar into place. That was probably the easiest one that we're going to do. Back to the zoom tool. I'm going to zoom in now on this piece of coral. And I'm going to make, using this lasso tool, the lasso makes free form selections, kind of like the pencil tool in Illustrator makes free form um, paths. So I'm going to draw just a big blobby shape around this coral. I don't want it to overlap anything, any of the other objects, any of the stuff left behind from objects that I've cut out or my artwork over here. And I'm going to use uh, the magic wand, which is hidden underneath that quick selection tool. And the magic wand, what I can do with this is um, select based on color. Okay, so it's kind of like the quick selection tool in that I could click on an object and it's going to select the color. I can also deselect based on color. Um, I can take away from this selection. And inside this selection, if you look at it, I have more white than anything. I've got the cream colored uh, coral, but all this background, all this background pixels are all white. So if I hold down Alt, that allows me to take away from a selection. Hold down Alt and click, and it gets rid of all those white pixels. And so now it's all snapped to the edge of that coral. Okay, I'm going to hit Control Zero to zoom out. I'm going to grab that coral, I'm going to move it into place, and then Control D to deselect. Next object, this sort of nautilus shell down here. It's on a fairly complicated background, but there's a lot of contrast between the object and the background. 
It's very cool color and dark. This is a little bit warmer, a little bit lighter, uh, and um, so there's a lot of contrast. And Photoshop can detect edges when there's a lot of contrast. Hidden underneath the regular lasso tool, there's two other lasso tools. The one I'm looking at here is the magnetic lasso tool. So I'm going to get that, and I'm going to click once. I just click once. That's all I have to do, and it gives me an anchor point. And then I just have to gently follow around the edge of the Nautilus shell. If I've got a direction change, like I'm down in this corner here, I'm going to click. But for the most part, it's going to put its own little anchor points in there and give me a good selection. And it's pretty good at snapping to the edge. If I go way out here, it'll start snapping to other edges. It's not that great that it's going to snap to the edge even though if I go way outside. So if I need to start over, I'm going to hit Escape and start over. Okay, so let me start over here, get back to where I was. And go all the way around this object here. You might need to go a little bit slower. I'm going pretty fast. I've done this before. And I get back to the end and I get a little circle and when I click, it forms a pretty good selection. If you're back to the end and it's not giving you that little circle, uh, hit enter and it'll turn into a selection for you. Now usually these selections aren't perfect when you would use that magnetic lasso. Um, so you'll have to go in there and I'm going to zoom in a little bit more and find little things where you're going to need to add or take away. So I've got too much selected right here so I'm going to hold down Alt just like I did with the coral and I'm going to go around the edge and remove that little extra bit. And I'm just going to go quickly once around the object to see if there's anything I need to add or take away. Probably need to add a little bit here, so I'm going to hold down Shift. Shift is the opposite of Alt. It allows me to add pixels to my selection. So I added those pixels there. And overall it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. So once I've done um, Shift and Alt to add and take away from my selection, I'll hit Control-0 to zoom out and then get my move tool to move the object into place. Control D to deselect. Okay, so now I'm going to zoom in on this last object. Um, there are a number of different tools that you could use to select this object. Um, I'm actually going to use the polygonal lasso tool. I don't know that I use this tool a lot in my own work, but I do want you to see it. So the way it works is I click once and it has this little leader line that comes out. Okay, so I can kind of trace around this object, which is fairly straight lines, and anytime I have a little direction change, I'm going to click and go all the way around it. A real organic shape like this shell is maybe not the best for this tool, but you'll get practice using it. And again, bring it back to the original and click again, and it'll finish itself off. Or I hit enter, and it'll turn into my, my selection. I might go ahead and zoom in and, and do some cleanup work with my regular lasso. Hold down shift to add areas. Okay. A little space bar to give me a grabber hand so I can move around. A little shift. If I've got too much, I'll hold down alt. Now, there are ways to refine our selection and make it better um, using some tools in Photoshop. We will learn those. Oops, move the selection there. Um, we will learn those as we go along. So don't stress about trying to figure out if every single little tiny pixel should be part of your um, selection or not. Just do the best you can with cleaning up. Go ahead and hit Control-0. And then um, I'm going to hit Control T, which you learned being transform. It allows me to also rotate as well as resize. So I'm going to rotate this, hit Enter to apply, and move it into place. Control D to deselect. Last step, crop tool. We've used the crop tool a little bit. So I'm going to grab the crop tool, draw a box around what I want to keep, and hit Enter, and we finish this piece off. I'll give you further instruction on what to do with this object um, once we learn how to do layers and uh, we're going to add some shadows in here later on but for right now you've learned your selection tools you know what you're doing with your selection tools now and our lesson is finished.